Hello everyone. You are watching scardia.com and I am Dr. Hamad Adil. Today our topic is spinal infection. As you know the spinal column is actually bounded from multiple vertebra and this vertebral column actually contains the spinal cord. Spinal infections is a very important problem because once it does develop this may, may lead to debilitating problems such as progressive neuralgia and leading to paraplegia or even quadriplegia as well. We will be discussing mainly the spinal infection, what the different types of infection are there and how we broadly classify them into two types. Broadly, there are pyogenic and non-pyogenic forms. We will be discussing in details what are the different organisms which cause the pyogenic infection and what is the most common organism involving the non-pyogenic form and other the less common organisms as well, such as uh, those with, uh, like fungal and parasitic infections as well. From then onwards, we will be moving on towards the risk factors of the spinal infection. As you know, the HIV is a no, uh, quite rampant in the first world and due to the immunocompromised state of the patients, the tuberculosis have actually is kind of awakened, the giant has awakened again, especially in the first world. And there is a lot of spinal infection with tuberculosis. This resurgence is mainly attributed towards the HIV spread as well. We will be briefly discussing what are the other causes other than HIV as well and what are the risk factors which may be present in the patient which may lead to some form of a spinal infection. From then onwards we will moving on towards the what are the signs symptoms of spinal infection, what is the clinical uh, criteria, how to take a patient's history and how to assess on examination and what, what to go for in laboratory investigation as well. What are there, there are special tests available as well such as ZN straining and CS for the bacterial uh, infection as well. And then we'll be going uh, also discussing what to look for on blood CP, ESR and CRP once we're doing that. And then we'll moving on towards the imaging. What to look for on imaging, especially when we get an X-rays and MRI as well as the CT guided biopsy as well. And what to look for on MRI so to differentiate from pyogenic from non-pyogenic infection. Then we are moving on to different types of pyogenic infection and we will be discussing the uh, detail, the criteria which makes them uh, the different types of course so called the, we call it the pyogenic infection. And then from then onwards we are moving on towards the clinical features as there are certain features which differentiate acute form of a pyogenic osteomyelitis from a chronic non-pyogenic or tuberculous osteomyelitis and we will be discussing what are the different features on history and examination which differentiate a pyogenic from non-pyogenic form of osteomyelitis. Then we will be briefly discussing the x-rays which we see on x-rays and MRI and what do, how we differentiate them and then what is the treatment of pyogenic infection. Right, starting from the antibiotic therapy to the conservative measures to the surgical options. We'll be discussing these options one by one and what how we to proceed a patient with pyogenic infection. Now, once the patient has spinal tuberculosis, we'll be discussing that what are the most common form of the non-pyogenic infections, which is TB, and then the less common form as well, which may be very rare in the patient like aspergillosis, brucellosis, parasitic, or even the fungal infections. From then we will moving on to the clinical features, what are the features of a spinal tuberculosis infection and what makes it look like towards the spinal TB rather than any pyogenic infection. From then we will moving on to the physical examination, what to look for if the patient is suffering with spinal tuberculosis and what are the treatment options we have, right? Starting from the medication therapy, that is what type of anti-tuberculous drugs are available and how we can give them, whether what is the treatment regimen for the first two months and then from 12 up, up till 9 to 18 months as well. And then we'll be discussing onto the uh, those options which are the, called as the surgical options for the spinal TB. We'll be discussing different surgical procedures like idea uh, fixation with scorpectomy, strut crafting, pedicle subtraction, osteotomies, multiple myelotomies or pheromonotomies as well. All these options will be discussed in the lecture. If you want to look, see other lectures associated with orthopedics or even those lectures which are maybe associated with spine as well, go to www.scadi.com and visit that website and keep watching scadi.com for other lectures as well. Thank you very much. Keep watching scadi.com.